<clears throat> Watkins, the perfect family butler, addresses the young master who is still abed. It's a lady to see you, Mr. Archibald, sir. The matter appears to be pressing. Luncheon was served quite an hour ago. But I didn't waken you, sir, because, as you know, there are times, sir, when sleep is a blessing. I have here, sir, some ice to place on your head, and also a whiskey and polly. I don't know what time you retired to bed, but the party, sir, must have been jolly. You pardon my saying so. The lady in question, awaiting below, is accompanied, sir, by her mother, and also a prize-fighting gentleman, sir, a pugnacious character, one may infer, whom the lady describes as her brother. The elderly female is quite commonplace, and a most vulgar person, I fear, sir. She shouts in a nerve-wracking falsetto voice and a language is painful to hear, sir, if you pardon my saying so. The prize-fighting person is burning with hate and refers to you, sir, as a twister and threatens to alter the shape of your clock, to break you in half and knock off your block if you don't do right by his sister. The young lady, through trembling lips, says that you gave her a promise of marriage and she doesn't see why she should have to eat fish and chips while you, sir, ride by in your carriage. If you pardon my saying so, sir. Sir John has a nasty attack of the gout and he's fuming to beat all creation. Milady, your mother, is up in the air. She's having hysterics and tearing her hair and borders on nervous prostration. Would you like me to pack your portmanteau at once, sir, and look up the times of the train, sir? Or would you prefer if I bought you a drink and a pistol to blow out your brain, sir, if you pardon my saying so. <clears throat> 